Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I'm in an excellent, excellent mood this morning because it is very, very sunny. It's one of those days that is making me really excited for Christmas. It's making me excited for autumn. Well, we're already in autumn. We are very much fully in the thick of it now, but today has some, for some reason, got me really, really excited for Christmas. I think it's because this year, now that we've had some actual tree surgeons come and like help with the trees in our garden, we've got loads of red berries on the um, holly trees and it just looks so festive. My view right now is a holly tree covered in red berries. And the green and red is its getting me excited for Christmas. And you know what? I've, I've started to have messages, DMs from some of you guys saying that you're starting to re-watch last year's Vlogmas videos. And I don't blame you. <laughs> I think we are all starting to feel that festive spirit. But let's stop talking about Christmas. Today is going to be a really fun autumnal day. Um, so right now I'm about to head across the fields, not across the road, across the fields to our next door neighbour farmer because they are setting up and launching their pumpkin patch this weekend and I said I'd go and help create like a little photo display area um, and like the entrance and just basically hopefully help them make it look quite beautiful and Instagrammable. I'm sure they won't need much help at all. And then tonight we are going over to our friends Rory and Nathan's house for some snacks and drinks and then we're heading to Blenheim Palace. It is their Halloween light display on at the moment um, so we're going to check that out. So without further ado let's get outside in the fresh air and go and check out the pumpkin patch. <laughs> So this is the pumpkin patch ready to go for the weekend and uh, as you can see there are so many pumpkins ready to be picked. I think they might extend over the week as well if there's any pumpkins left. Got a little arrangement going on here, pick your own. I think, well, were you doing coffees at the weekend as well? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, fantastic. So my coffee man told me so you can't come. Oh, right, that's not very useful. So what are you going to do? lots of pumpkins, we've got some dahlias locally grown and I think we're just going to add even more. Next, um, <clears throat> maybe five seconds? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> it doesn't take long, does it? little boys sunbathing <laughs> okay so just got back from the pumpkin patch excuse the messy garage but i really want to show this to you because it has been a little bit of a game changer for us so this is our new solution for our parcels basically charlie and i get so many deliveries especially at this time of year whether it's new autumn shopping bits and bobs or whether it's gifts and things like that or in today's case my amazon parcels this is the yale smart lock box um we're actually working on a campaign with them over on the old house instagram account but it's such a game changer i thought i would quickly mention it um so what i now do is i put the pin code and the instructions it's literally like all they have to do is type in a pin code for the lock box on my deliveries i've added it automatically automatically to my Amazon deliveries because with Amazon in particular you, I, even though I only did one order the other day yes it had like seven or eight things in it but they always arrive separately as individual parcels and that's just when even if Charlie and I are home but we're working it's we find it really disruptive coming down 
loads and loads of times, which I know sounds like such a first world problem. Um, but for example, yesterday I was in London all day and I wouldn't have wanted these bits just left out and about on the doorstep. It was also pouring with rain here yesterday. So what they've done is they, the delivery guys and ladies now know that they can leave stuff in here, which is so, so useful. Um, you can set it up on your phone, but because I'm old fashioned, <laughs> I'm using the fob. So when I get home, it's just really easy. I just use the fob to undo it and then I have access to my parcels. It's just a really good idea, keeps them, keeps them dry and obviously it's bolted to the wall. And this has literally just launched, brand new to the UK market, so I'll leave some info about it down below and keep an eye on the old house account because we've filmed some really fun little um, posts and stories for the Yale lockbox. But without further ado, let's open up ooh, these goodies that were inside. Come on then, handsome. I had a few of you guys asking if we'd uh, named our old defender as well. Well, we haven't actually given him, I feel like it's definitely a him, we haven't given him a name yet, so any, uh, any suggestions are very much welcome. Even though it's sunny, ooh, that lighting is rather crazy. Yeah, even though it's sunny, it is really quite chilly today, so I'm actually just gonna keep my jacket on for a few moments. So we have got Let's do a little unboxing together. Oh, is your brother in there? Come on, man. Dixie and Mom, no, Dixie's not here. Dixie's there. <laughs> so cute. Dickie was whimpering because he got separated from his brother. Oh, this is so lovely. So this first delivery is Paula, uh, who we follow on Instagram, her account is Hill House Vintage. Paula has released her book, which is Hill House Living, The Art of Creating a Joyful Life. Dearest Josie, I really hope that you enjoy the book. All the best, Paula. Oh, this is so lovely. I wonder what kind of stuff is gonna be in here. From catwalk to dog walks and from couture to manure. Over a decade ago, I transported my family from the busy streets of South London to a small village in Norfolk where we didn't know a soul. Well, that sounds familiar. I'm not gonna lie. I would love one day to do a really nice, wholesome book like housekeeping, etiquette. And I feel like that's what this is. Oh, that's so funny. I think there's just gonna be loads of really interesting snippets in here. A few tips to help you win at bidding on eBay. Can vintage be mixed with modern country house style today? Love this. Oh my gosh, this is, okay. Oh, oh my goodness. So many things in here that I'm gonna just really enjoy looking through. There's some recipes in here. Paula's easy leftovers and cheese souffle. How to grow potted bulbs home styling there's a little christmas section this is so up my street so paula thank you for sending me your book i will leave hill house vintage um the art of creating a joyful life linked down below and now darlings i have some amazon bits to open and i'm thrilled to be working with amazon again so thank you to them for working with me on this video and i've started with quite possibly the most boring package but that is what we all know and love about amazon you literally can get everything from there i somehow managed to snap my wet brush in half the other day. I don't actually have a clue how I did it, um, but I desperately did need a new one. And my wet brush of choice, and they literally are the best hairbrushes ever because the fact that the bristles are so um, wide and they don't have any fluffy bristles in between, I find that it doesn't make my hair go frizzy and it doesn't stop my, it doesn't like dislodge the form of my curls. So they are without doubt my favorite hairbrushes. And then the reason why I got this one, and this is their shower detangler, is because it's got this hook. And our sinks in the bathroom have got these two little um, sidebars. So I hook my hairbrush onto the sidebar and then I always know where it is. Okay, my next Amazon purchase was a little trio of aged terracotta plant pots. I did need some extras for our um, autumnal porch outside and it's actually really expensive buying old plant pots, which is just <laughs> totally mad. Um, so I do tend to grab them whenever I see them and these came up in my recommended on Amazon and they literally look like they have genuinely been used like you can almost see bits of soil in there i'm sure they haven't i'm sure they are fresh from the factory but whoever's made them has done a really good job it says aged with natural mosses Ooh. 
And then I ordered some fashion pieces. Something that is going to be genuinely really, really useful is this pair of gloves. So I believe, yes, I'm not sure if it's cashmere or if it's wool, but these are a really lovely soft brown leather and they've got like a wool um, lining. And the reason that I bought these is for our old Defender because the heating in that car is not very good and I just can't bear to have cold hands. Obviously there is no heated steering wheel in that car so I thought these would be fantastic driving gloves and I will just leave these in the car. I am very much on the lookout for a really luxurious pair of gloves for the autumn winter season but I wouldn't want to leave a really luxurious expensive pair of gloves in the car. I would want them to be Ooh. <laughs> creaky doors in this house um i would want to keep bringing them out the car have them in my handbag uh wear them when we go out and about and if i'm totally honest with you most of the time we do drive the new defender the black one um so i wouldn't want to have to keep going to the old car to get my gloves out basically long story short i want to leave this pair of gloves in the glove box of the old defender um they fit me perfectly i got the smallest size they don't really have many design details other than just really um, thin, neat stitching. What you could do is turn them back a little bit if you wanted to see that soft lining to give a little bit of design detail, but to be honest, I'm not too bothered. They've got a little, I'm not sure if you can see, but a little bit of cinching in detail on the wrist, which just gives them a slightly more delicate shape. I think they had these in black as well, but I find, um, I, I just never really wear black as I'm from in the gym, so I thought that the dark chocolate brown would be perfect for me and they seem to have enough movement to them that they'll be perfect for driving. So that is exactly what I wanted. Um, really happy to have found those and that lining is so soft. I think that probably is cashmere actually and it's like a, a beigey light brown colour. I think these were actually Amazon own brand, straight from the Amazon fashion pages. But yes, very happy with those. And something else that obviously I've not tried on yet, but I'm already very happy with the look and feel of. They are so soft, speaking of chocolate brown. I really wanted another pair of chocolate brown leggings because I wear my dark brown sweaty betty leggings a lot. Um, and when they're in the wash, I just don't know what to do with myself. So I thought I would pick up another pair of brown leggings. These are really nice and high-waisted. Um, they don't appear to have any other design detail. And I will wear these with my barber jacket, my brown leather boots, things like that. I do love to wear brown leggings around the house and when I'm going out and about. And because I love Amazon leggings so much, I did also buy are these black or dark brown. Oh no, these are the uh, tummy sculpting leggings, another pair of the tummy sculpting leggings. They're a little bit thicker and like more supportive and I just find that they give you such a nice silhouette. So ordered another pair of those. They're slightly thicker than my other um, waist support leggings. And then for an autumn classic, this is your classic brown cable knit jumper. I really liked the cable knit design on this. Very, very classic. You've got this little pocket detail, high neck as well. I might wear this this evening actually. I, I can definitely get away with wearing thermals underneath this. So I think with a nice gilet, maybe one of my long line ball gilets and boots, that'll be the perfect cozy outfit for tonight. This next delivery is a PR delivery from Bare Minerals and I love that they've started doing this. They've started sending their PR deliveries in these stasher bags and they are literally the most useful thing in the whole world. I have so many of them in the drawers, either in the drawers or um, in the freezer full of frozen berries, full of broad beans. I also decant my mini moon mochi balls and put them in here because it takes up less room just a much more sustainable alternative to using little plastic ziplock bags or plastic sandwich bags so let's see do we have a new launch Ooh, lasting eyeliner i wonder if they've got a brown that is graphite Ooh, and the shade diamond very soft pencil that'll be really nice for lining the lash line to give your eyes a little bit more of a glimmer eyeshadow palette a new ultra natural mineralist eyeshadow palette that packaging is very me indeed a beautiful pinky taupe shade <gasps> oh yes that is a very josie eyeshadow palette very wearable shades that sandstone color is lovely and then they've got a shade called dawn 
and I love a kind of mushroomy taupey shade like this for an everyday just simple swash over the eyelid, a croof under the brow bone, taupe nice from the crease and then the shell shade has got a little bit of shimmer which would be perfect for adding that pop of colour, that is absolutely gorgeous, cannot wait to give that a try, again I'm going to give that a try this evening for our Halloween lights at Blenheim Palace. I spoke too soon, started to get a little bit hot in my jacket. Um, so this lovely final delivery is from Treatwell, which is an app where you can book your beauty treatments. Very, very useful. And they have, ooh, they have sent an autumnal selection of goodies. I just pulled these out and this is the kind of thing that I love to keep, again, for table decoration. If I've got my napkins, um, I'm going to do a little setup later on in the vlog probably and show you, but I like to just put little bits of foliage in with my napkins when I'm doing my table settings. What else have we got? Spiced pumpkin pie, biodegradable tea parcels. What do you want to do, Dickens? Nothing of yours is in the dining room. You don't need to go in there, baby boy. I love a seasonal cup of tea. I have, well actually, Charlie made me a coffee which I turned into a pumpkin spice latte. Christopher, oh no, Cryptopher, the vampire caramel, ooh, monstrously Moorish caramel chocolates from Hotel Chocolat, love that. And then, oh, okay, that's actually really useful. So they've obviously sent this to put the dried flowers in, um, which is obviously lovely, but I like to use little posy jars like this um, for fresh flowers and I'll use these as I said for the table decorations so really lovely little bundle thank you to treat well okay darlings I'm up in the dressing room and the knit dress is absolutely perfect exactly what I was hoping that this dress would be the fit is absolutely perfect the length just above my knee is exactly where I want it to be for a kind of everyday dress. I will show you in this mirror here so that we don't have any of the antique detail of the mirror getting in the way. These pockets, I mean, to be honest, I'm never really going to use them, but it's a nice little design detail. I'd pro I think I'd prefer them if they're a tiny bit higher, but never mind. I do just love a dress that I can throw on and be comfortable in for a day working from home, but then equally if I do need to dash out, then it's still a nice little stylish option. So yes, this is absolutely perfect. Exactly what I was hoping for. So this is definitely a keeper. So the leggings are a little bit tighter than I was expecting, um, but <laughs> Okay, so here are the leggings. I put them on with a plain cashmere um, roll neck from Lily Silk and um, Do you know I'm pretty sure I got a really nice cashmere roll neck from Amazon last year I'll try and link it if I can find it Leggings are absolutely perfect. As I said, I just really wanted a pair of brown le leather, brown leggings that I could be comfortable in. Uh, they'll go really nicely with when I am wearing my riding boots. This is literally like a Josie uniform these days, this kind of thing. Mm. It's actually harder to get on without socks. So here's the outfit with the Amazon brown leggings um, with Prada walking boots and yeah, as I said, this is just a Josie outfit that I wear all the time, pretty much every single day. But yeah, the leggings are also really nice and high-waisted, so nice and flattering if you did want to wear a little cropped jumper. I think, to be honest, I'll wear this tonight or maybe... I'll wear my new boots because I did decide to swap my Brunello Cuccinelli ones, uh, the overpriced wellies, for the next size up because I do think I'll get a lot of wear out of them. So they actually arrived um, not that long ago, so I'll unbox those in a second. But I do have two other pairs of boots to share with you. This was another Amazon find. So do I need another pair of wellies? I mean, I didn't desperately need them, but I really, really liked the colour combination of these. Um, and Charlie and I like to have lots of pairs of wellies at the house so that if we have friends and guests coming over um, and they didn't bring wellies, then they can borrow some. So I did get these in a size and a half bigger than what I would normally get, which is great because if I have got some really thick welly socks on, then these will fit me perfectly. Or if, for example, like Charlie's mum comes over and she's a size bigger than me then these will be perfect for her they're just very like classic countryside wellies you've got a nice little suede contrast detail here suede around the top the brand is Ariat. i will of course leave them linked down below and they're this dark olivey green they actually match really nicely with my amazon gilet i've had this 
when did I get this? Like the, probably this time last year actually. And this is again, just countryside uniform. If you want to look like you live in the Cotswolds, <laughs> this is the uniform. And I have had a lot of use out of this gilet um, since getting it last year. What's this in the pocket? Ooh, round trees randoms and there's one left, but I tried to think how out of date these are. Best before September, 2021. I'd probably better not. Because I got this so long ago, I'm not sure if the gilet will still be in stock, but I'll have a little look. And if I can find it, then of course, I will leave it linked um, down below. But I do have one other very exciting pair of boots to share with you. A lot of you guys actually <laughs> messaged me about these because you know my love for Chloe. And of course, I could not resist the Chloe moon boots. So here they are. Let me know what you guys think of these. Obviously I do have um, a pair of non-Chloe moon boots, which I absolutely love. These are actually chunkier. I mean, the soles of them are absolutely ginormous. They are incredibly chunky to wear, but just so comfortable. And if you watched my boots video, I was saying about how um, I, would, I like to wear cozy boots like this to get to the gym, to go to Pilates, and I am starting um, Reformer Pilates again. I found out that they do it at the Bamford Spa at Dalesford, although I'm not sure if I could drive in these. That's a good point. But anyway, I just absolutely love them. They've got this kind of woven detail on the front. It says Chloe at the back. It's just one of those really silly uh, things that makes me very happy. So if it makes you happy, that's the most important thing. Okay, so I went down and grabbed the Brunello Cuccinelli. So if you missed my boot, um, autumn boot collection video, I basically ordered these in my usual size, which is a size 36. And they were okay, but because they're rubber, rubber doesn't really, um, doesn't expand over time like leather does. And they were just slightly on the snug side so I thought let's play it safe and get them in a few sizes up because that's the mistake that I made with my Chloe wellies um, that are also rubber and I just find they're a little bit tight so these are now for some reason they didn't have a 37 they went from a 36 to a 37.5 so these are actually a size and a half bigger than my usual size I said when I first unboxed it I really liked the fabric on the dust bag <laughs> quite smelly um so what i love about these is the contrast hem at the top would you call that a hem contrast bit at the top i think it gives them a really nice equestrian uh, riding boot style the thing that i don't love however is this very bling stirrup detail but uh, it doesn't bother me that much and i love the boots so much overall so many of you very kindly sent me various alternatives so I will leave a few different price points of boots similar to this linked down below but I do think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of them so I'm very happy to actually make that investment but let's see if the fit is a little bit better so my Prada boots yeah these are a 36 but obviously because they're leather they are a little bit more flexible oh yes that feels good that feels good. So this is what they look like. I definitely don't think they look too big. That contrast detail really is so lovely. It's exactly what I was after. So very, very happy with this. Just goes to show you can really mix high and low if you know what to look out for. Lily Silk Cashmere Jumper, Amazon um, Gilet, Amazon Leggings, and Brunello Cuccinelli Wellies. Now the question is, do I risk wearing these tonight because the trails at uh, the light trails at Blenheim are quite long lots of walking and obviously I've never worn these boots before so I don't want to end up getting blisters but I actually don't feel that they're going to rub anywhere hmm I might just wear them around the house until we have to go and come to a decision we are on our way to Rory and Nathan's and there is some re-thatching in progress here Charlie uh, puts a good fact on the store top Instagram the other day that the, the thatching gets reused as animal bedding, is that right? Or yeah, feed? Well, well obviously it depends on your thatcher, but if you use a good sustainable thatcher, obviously yeah. everything's grown organically and then the old thatch they remove and normally sell it to farmers for a small fee for animal bedding. So and good. then normally after that, farmers also that are sustainable and that will you know see a value in it will just stick it on their fields because it then further um, composts 
yeah, more nutrition. So, um, I mean, look, obviously a thatch roof per se is not the most sustainable thing in terms of like energy output, but obviously it's important, I think, and keep them from a historic perspective. Definitely. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, interesting. Mm, It'll be interesting. We may even be able to share a bit more about thatching in the near future. Hopefully. So we've just arrived to Rory and Nathan's yeah. and I am so thrilled to see that Rory has already put up their Christmas tree. Darling, would you like to explain yeah, why, why you've done it so early? So last year, Nathan and I uh, were living in New York yes. and we were moving back to England around early yeah, mid-December so we yeah. weren't putting up a tree or any decorations. Oh, so you didn't have one at all last year? Nothing, really. Oh. And then when we got back to England, we stayed in your physical apartment. Yeah. Yes. Quarantining, the, uh, which again, we didn't and we want. didn't provide you with a tree. That's <laughs> so awful <laughs> of us. I know. <laughs> and, um, and then by the time we got out to quarantining in your flat, I went to my mum's. It was like Christmas Eve already. Yeah. So I had Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and then it was over. So last year I had a three-day Christmas. So this year I'm having a three-month. I love it. Oh my goodness. Well. well, it looks fantastic, yeah, and you said this isn't the only one in the house. Um, one living room, two. <laughs> and because this tree is from the US, it's got a US plug. Like it. so ah. Just now, I just had my little Amazon transformer uh, arrive. Amazing. So, so, anyway, <laughs> oh, well, how does that work? Oh, so it's a UK to US? Yeah, well, so you can't US use to UK. for electronics, really. If you're doing US electronics in England. Yeah. It's but, not just um, the different shape of the pins. Yeah. We have a, yeah, yeah. our electricity is it higher? twice as strong um, as theirs. Right. So you have to You're buy right. what's called a oh, step down oh, transformer, which this is. Oh. Which reduces the amount of electricity going through it so that you don't blow up your American electronics in England. Oh my gosh, because, uh, yeah, someone, was it you guys that hadn't, couldn't get your TV to work because it was too much stronger? And that's why my Dyson Airwrap never works in the US, because it's too strong maybe. Yikes. It's too strong. Basically, their electricity isn't strong enough to power it. Right, so it won't break your appliances. Midway working. Okay, so we're going to have a ceremonious uh, lighting of the the Christmas lights and yeah, there's, a plug <laughs> there's a plug and Nathan <laughs> chef extraordinaire has done a Halloween themed um, th are they Thermomix creations some of them are so yeah you've got the, the mummy sausages mummified sausages and the mac and cheese cup cupcakes I guess mac I bought, and cheese I cupcakes I oh my um, gosh they look like good as well and did you oh so you you bought these but bought you you made the mac and cheese yeah, oh and my then, goodness, um, and what's going on here? We just got some chicken with some buffalo sauce. Just some chicken and buffalo sauce and all of this, and Charlie and I are expecting to turn up for, for crisps and a glass of, of water. I know, we thought <laughs> we just crisps and some like pistachios or something. Oh, ready? Ta-da! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Christmas has officially arrived. Oh, I've ordered a crown to go. <laughs> So while we're digging into our delicious feast, which by the way, Nathan, you have absolutely yeah. smashed it. Rory. Part, partly Thermomix here. Yep. Yeah, we are big Thermomix fans here. <laughs> Rory. <laughs> yeah, it's still wearing away. Actually, Nathan's made this delicious. Is it an apple cider? Sorry, I keep quizzing Nathan while he's got his mouth full. <laughs> apple cider, something delicious. Mold cider. <laughs> Mold, Stop apple pointing Mold apple juice. Mold apple juice. <laughs> Wow, it is absolutely scrumptious. And Rory, because Charlie asked about Cornish pasties at bake at um <laughs> at bacon, uh Blenheim, um Rory has just given us an epic fact about just Cornish quickly, pasties. Rory is the king of facts. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Actually my, my audience know this because every time I ever vlog Rory they he you give us a gem. Out some facts. <laughs> yes. So what's your Cornish pasty fact, Rory? So we were saying that the hard uh, pastry bit on the side of the Cornish pasty that goes curved around it mm. was for in the olden days down in Cornwall, sailors and coal miners, they'd get them for their lunch. Yeah. They'd have dirty hands from the boat and from the coal mines. Yeah. And they'd be given a Cornish pasty and the hard bit of pastry at the side was just the handle for their dirty hands. They'd eat the rest of it and then chuck the dirty handle in the sea and ah. carry on with their day. That is such a good fact. It's yeah. wasteful. Such a good fact. It's a genius. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just butter and flour. It's well, the birds would probably eat it. Right? Yeah. The seagulls. Very yeah. true. Mm. There's our fact of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've just arrived and we've been greeted by a headless horseman. Wow, that is spooky. Very good. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's actually really scary, isn't it? Real, isn't yeah, especially when you only see the silhouette. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. So we've arrived at the palace and this is the first year that they have done this um, Halloween event. It's, I think it's going to be a little bit similar to the Christmas light show but with some spooky surprises as you saw we just were greeted by a headless horseman and because you can just see his silhouette it does look quite scary. Um, very glad that I bought my Holland Cooper bobble hat because where it's been such a clear sky day it's actually really quite chilly. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to expect tonight, but I think it's going to be good fun. So there's a couple of little food stands. I think we've all decided we'd quite like a, a hot drink to take around with us. We even have spooky themed sweeties. I might try an eyeball. What have you tried? A brain, mate. A brain? Yeah, I need a few more brain cells in me, so I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I remember it. Go to fairgrounds and at Tame Fair, where I used to go as a child. You know those like haunted house rides. that what I was doing was called blogging because the local newspaper, the Dallas Morning News, did a full page article that said meet the blogger and blogger was just huge type across the top. And um, I had a new word. Other people I think also learned a new word that day. But I also learned that what I was doing was my services online for free. That was the way that they described it. The girl that you know from around town, she's just started this new thing. It's everything she does online for free. I didn't think much about that article. I just thought that they were wrong and didn't understand what I was doing. I was happy to have the press. But about six months later, I was still living with my dad and still eating his cereal. And I was paying a photographer and had just bought a really expensive website. And my customers were texting me saying, I bought the jeans, I got the bag, thanks for sharing. I told people to sign up for your newsletter. And they thought that they were supporting me, but really I just cut myself out of my own business and I wasn't able to make money on the things that I sold them online. And so in 2010, um, my boyfriend and I at the time, he's now my husband, um, he was an engineer and he said, well, I see how um, soul crushing this is for you. Um, let's, let's do something. How do you want to make money as a blogger? And I was like, I just want the same thing. I want to make money 
just the same way when I earn it. I want to do it whenever I earn a commission, um, but, but I want to be able to do it online and prove that I convinced people that that, that was the right purse, the right pair of jeans. And so we started a company back then that has now grown to 350 people, more than, um, worldwide. And so London was actually our first international office. <laughs> <laughs> I think the girls have smashed it with the, the influencer, side of influencer marketing. My background was marketing before becoming an influencer full time. And so for me, when I was working in marketing, I had to uh, make up for every pound I spent within my marketing role. And sometimes it'd be really hard to, to justify, oh, I spent 500 pounds on this or 500 pounds on that in return on investment. So I think for me, what really excites me about influencer marketing, and especially with companies like LTK, is that it's actually really trackable. And I think that anyone that works in marketing needs to be able to justify their marketing spend. So that's what really excites me about influencer marketing. And when I, when I speak to my parents' friends at events, they're like, oh, so what do you do? Are you going to get a real job? I love talking to them about the marketing side of it because you can really say, well, look, these companies can use a company like Reward Style and say, oh, well, they invested this much. And because it's all online, it's all digital, it's all trackable, you can see exactly the return on investment. So that's what I think is great about influencer marketing. Signals because I'm sure everyone in this room, our shopping habits have changed so much over the last two years for obvious reasons. And for me, you can see those signals really easily by looking at, as Molly was saying, your, your LTK app. And whether it's, I think my most sold thing probably used to be a dress, and now it's a frying pan. Like that says a lot about my audience <laughs> and, and what they're purchasing at the moment and their spending habits. So it enables you to be, really keep in touch with your audience and make sure that you know that what you're talking about still resonates with them. Are you talking about a happy medium price point? If I suddenly decided to become a super duper luxury blogger and my sales went down, but my views went up, that maybe says, oh, there's an interest there, but it's not what my audience is comfortable with spending wise. So as you were saying, it, it's the analytics that enable you to keep in touch with your audience. And I think that's what keeps them, keeps them there and keeps them engaged. So does the brand in that way? I think um, we call ourselves the OGs, the old times <laughs> of the industry, and I, I don't think that anybody really went into it thinking it could become a job, let alone you become someone that works closely with brands and even to be called a brand in ourselves. But I think the industry, and I think people's shopping habits has changed hugely. Like Amber was saying, working in personal shopping, I worked in personal shopping in Topshop uh, 10 years ago, and sometimes when I'd have customers in the changing room, you'd really want to recommend a pair of River Island jeans instead. <laughs> and I think that's the nice thing about um, what we're doing is that we're able to create an edit from lots of different brands and lots of different companies. And that in itself, that editing process makes you the brand. And I think over the, over the time that I've been doing it, I've realized that actually you just kind of have to stick to what you really, really like, because I'm sure it's really cliche, but there's only one version of you and people are following you for you. They're not following you for I don't know, if you're, if you're an actress, let's say, they might be following you because you did a great job in James Bond. Whereas if you're following Molly, you're following Molly, I mean, maybe you did have a great role in James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm following Molly because I love what you're wearing and if I love your style in jeans, maybe I also love your style in coats and maybe I also love your taste in restaurants because I think people follow creators because they see similarities in themselves to that creator and they think, actually, I bought a pair of uh, shoes that Josie recommended and I really liked them, so maybe I'll also like her recommendation mm -hmm. for X, Y, Z as well. I think that's right. Well, it's a few hours later and the panel talk went really, really well. It was, um, yeah, just a really natural conversation. Oh. And um, I think I might be able to find somewhere where you can watch it online, so if I can, I'll leave a link down below. But I've just got to White City. This is the Soho house um, near Shepherd's Bush. I've not been here since pre-pandemic, but I've got a lunch meeting here starting in 10 minutes. And I just noticed there is a Bluebird Cafe here, which I'm not sure if it was here pre-pandemic, and they have got a really lovely autumn display outside. Some serious inspo, hay bales and pumpkins and chrysanthemum bushes. Looks great. Very quick outfit of the day. I have got on my In The Fro Holland Cooper pink coat, which I love, and I have three bags now. <laughs> I've got my tote bag from the event, my Mulberry seat and crossbody, and then all my junk over here in the Burberry. Good morning, my darlings. It is now Saturday morning, and I'm not even sure what I vlogged yesterday, so it might have been a little bit of a strange day. 
Um, but after my meeting, which was really lovely at White City House, we ate a lot of food, <laughs> a lot of food. Then I got the train to the station near where our friends live, Victoria and Alex. We had a lovely, sorry, my phone is buzzing in my bag. We had a really lovely Greek night got to experience Victoria's signature, uh, I think it was a spinach and feta phyllo tart, which was absolutely delicious, and lots and lots of bow snuggles, so it was a really lovely evening. Today I have something a little bit different on this morning, so my lovely local nail wonderful lady, is that going to focus? Probably not. I actually haven't had my nails done for a couple of weeks, but it's still lasting really well. This is my kind of autumn leaf and star design. So her name on Instagram is by Hale, as in Haley, short for Haley, and she's notorious throughout the Cotswolds. Literally everyone in the Cotswolds needs wants to get an appointment with Haley, but she's always very booked up. And she is launching brunch and nail art workshops on Saturday mornings. So she has very kindly invited me to the first one. I think it's like a, a friends thing. She's gonna run through it for the first time. Um, a bit of a practice run, but I thought I would vlog it so that you guys can see what it's all about. And if you do happen to be coming um, on a nice weekend to the Cotswolds, or if you live around here, or if you're planning a hen do maybe, then this could be a really fun thing to do. So it's not too far, far from where we live. I'm gonna take what we're officially now calling the new Defender as opposed to the old Defender. Um, and outfit of the day is super duper cozy. So I've popped on my newer Chloe um, welly style boots with a little shearling top. Amazon leggings, old H&M long knit. I like it when they cover my bum. <laughs> I like it when they're this length. And then I've seen that they've bought this bag back this year. I've had this for a couple of years. It's the Chloe bag. Chloe Macy, I think it is, with a shearling. So a very, very cosy and autumnal outfit of the morning. Compton about to head in to Haley's studio. I think Haley's invited um, some ladies from local businesses as well. I'm parked up next to Feel Good Crystals, um, which apparently is quite the Instagram sensation, so I need to check that out. Um, behind me is the Land Rover Range Rover. Um, I'm not actually sure what the company's called, but they basically like soup up. Um, Land Rovers, Range Rovers, so if Charlie and I decide that we want to amend anything in our Defender then that is the perfect place to take it. But yeah, looks like some of the other ladies are here. I'm looking forward to meeting them and I'm looking forward to learning some nail art and what a gorgeous, gorgeous location to do it in.
home again and that was such a lovely way to spend the morning. These are my nail art designs. I definitely have a newfound appreciation for how much skill and creativity is needed and I will appreciate my nail art done by Haley so much more. So some of my favourites, we did this little uh, kind of leopard print design. I did mine on a pink base with some gold and some brown. This one was actually done by ripping apart a sponge, a nail sponge, to do almost like a galaxy. And then the abstract I thought was really cool as well, just a few different brush strokes. Again, I kept it quite neutral in the colours. Um, I tried to do a line drawing. And then, I think this one was called... Oh, I can't remember the name, but it's inspired by Italian pottery with a matte top coat. And it was just a really lovely way to spend the morning. We had little croissants, we had teas, coffees, we could have had a Bellini if we wanted it. And it was really nice to meet the other ladies that were there as well, including Kim, who runs a place in a nearby village called Feel Good Crystals. And she very kindly bought us all our own crystals. Apparently we need to waft this over some incense to cleanse it. And this one in particular is meant to be very good about, very good with helping um, feelings of anxiety and stress. So I might keep this one in the office. And we also left with our very own kit. So I've got all of my nail tools for when I want to give it a go at home. So that was just a really, really lovely morning. So thank you, Haley, for inviting me along. A few hours later and Charlie and I are both feeling a little bit low energy this afternoon, maybe after a bit of a late night last night. But we thought we would leave the house. That's what we like to do when we're feeling just just a little bit tired. Get we some... were doing lots of chores, weren't we? Yes. I've done a, you I've had a very productive I've spent, morning. Yeah, I've had a very productive day. Like things that you never think you're going to be doing when you're younger, like clearing gutters <laughs> and uh, sorting my wardrobe out. So I feel like I've achieved a lot, but I feel exhausted. Like I think yeah. the, the one thing with our where we live is there's constantly stuff we could be doing. So yeah. I think sometimes getting out means that we chill out more. It does. Because when we're at the house, we just feel the need to be doing those chores. We've been doing laundry, and as Charlie said, he's been doing a lot of tidying this morning. So, long story short, we have ended up in Stowe on the Wold, which Charlie and I didn't actually realize is only five minutes uh, down the road from Dalesford. I don't know why, in my head, we, my sense of direction is normally yeah. pretty good, but in the Cotswolds there's still a few places that I don't realise how close together they are. And it was last time that we came to Dalesford and one of the members of staff said that they lived in Stowe. I was thinking, gosh, that's a long commute. And she said that it was five minutes down the road. So we Can thought we would just... Um, that's a private car park. So we thought we'd just park up and do a little walk around Stowe and then I think we're going to treat ourselves to something nice from Dalesford for dinner. It's just a, a typical house on the high street that looks so cute with the berries and the vines. Lovely hydrangea bush that'll dry out beautifully. Estate fencing. Very nice. down in this uh, delicatessen and a very fluffy little somebody in the corner hello to you sir that raised eyebrows like leave me in peace something that charlie and i both said last night was that victoria and alex had a really good selection of art in their house didn't they they did and we've been saying all for a while i think it is the sort of thing that you end up it's like the finishing touch isn't it it's yeah like cherry on the top of the icing Okay. Yeah. We do need artwork in a lot of the rooms. We do. Yeah, I think I think naively we thought originally that the panelling was detailed enough. Actually, to break the panelling up in yeah. different rooms. Um, I have found some nice ones online. Mm. But, but let's have a look nice in ones. here. Look. Yeah, even if it just gives us an idea of the styles that we both like. Let's have a look. Falling deeper, cold on ice, that no more shit on. Keep that eggy and no more kid on. Just don't let's hide a shigo. He 
기대만 하는 것도 난 힘들어 Yeah, but for the start I can't just care 가져 내 마음을 마저 내 가슴을 다 바쳐 사랑하기엔 그 자신이 너무 걱정돼 바보 같은 생각이야 알아 멍청해 상상만으로도 좋은 상상만으로도 힘든 이중적인 면을 가지고 있어 사랑이라는 걸 So after what might possibly have been our best chip experience in the Cotswolds, easily the best chips. They were very good. They, I think, they're a family-run business. Yeah. And the girl that was in there also works at Dale's, doesn't she? Yeah. Mum and dad. Yeah. And um, so nice. Really, really, really good chips. And we got the scraps on top, the little bits of batter. Delicious, it's called Greedies in Stone in the World. It's worth going to Stone in the World just for that. Just for those fish and chips. But now we've come to Dalesford. As per usual, we're just going to have a little mooch around and maybe get even more food for dinner. Because <laughs> the chips were just our pre dinner dinner. Maybe the starter. The starter, yes. If you're looking for a gift for someone that's very hard to buy for, we've noticed that as well as doing the usual hampers, this year Dalesford are doing these kind of like reclaimed wooden boxes, these crates with cocktails, blood orange and cranberry. Ooh, that sounds good. Hazelnut espresso mm. martini, I bet I'd like that. But this looks amazing, this one. It does. Because it's, imagine if you, if your friend's having a birthday, you can't make it or something, or... Send them a cocktail party. Nice. Oh, an entire box full of Chateau Loup. Lovely. I love the floral circle made out of hops above you. And if someone's just had a baby? Well, I think that's probably the most restrained we've ever been at Dalesford. Yeah. We ended up only buying three ferns and some food for tonight. So I think that's very, very Mission, well done. Mischief us. managed. <laughs> mischief good managed way. and not too mischievous. Yeah. Um, so darlings, I'm just going to end the vlog now because Charlie and I are going to go home, pop some pizzas in the Arga and have a James Bond marathon. And I'm probably just going to pop my pyjamas on as soon as we get back. On. Yeah, pop on the stove, have a cosy evening. I'm not even in focus. So darlings, thank you for watching. Oh, I am now. Thank you for watching today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Tuesday for the next one. Bye-bye.